This is the fourth video in the series of orbital mechanics with Python, and this one I'm going to be covering the orbit propagator class and the planetary data file. Uh, we'll explain these in the next two slides. So for the orbit propagator class, so if you're familiar with object-oriented programming, you can kind of guess what it is. It is a wrapper class in order to kind of gather everything that has to do with orbit propagation. Um, if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, I'll be sure to leave um, some links in the description because it's not something you can really explain in one video. It's just a way of, it's a very convenient way of kind of creating your own object to do all your own things that you want. I don't know if that doesn't make sense. Uh, I'll be sure to put links in the video and then you can see later when I implement it, how it all works. Uh, so as I said, this class is a wrapper class for everything that I like to do with propagating orbits. It creates a level of abstraction uh, because naturally when you're working with orbital mechanics is a very high level um, skill. By high level, I don't mean that it's more difficult than a low level skill. Um, by high level, I just mean that it builds up top of a lot of layers of abstraction, say as, because um, Python by itself is already a very high level language, uh, whereas because it's built on top of C, where C is a low level language, doesn't mean it's any more difficult, it's just you can perform different tasks with these. And as far as the planetary data file, it's, I briefly mentioned it in the last video, but it just, it's a way of having every body that you would want in one file. So you can just import a body. You can import the sun. And from there, you can get all the attributes from the sun and be able to plot and do all types of orbit things with them. Sun, earth, whatever you want. So again, it's another level of distraction you can work with. Um, I was obviously explaining these further. I'll just get straight to it. Um, so here's a planetary data file. Um, the one I have is obviously much longer with a lot more bodies. But for the sake of examples, I just wanted to show these two were you have the sun, and these are just dictionaries. Um, dictionary is just a key and a value. So if you were to say sun and then mu, that would return um, this mu value here. That's all that's doing. These are what Python dictionaries are very useful. Um, but I have this in a separate file, just again, as an order, as a um, level of abstraction, because I want to keep it away from the main file, where the main file is where you actually run your script. This is just going to be located somewhere else. And if you can see the path up here, um, it's in a totally different directory than I have here. And I'll explain how you can kind of deal with importing in Python um, files from different directories. And for the orbit propagator class, I guess I'll just get started in writing this. And you'll see that I'm actually going to copy and paste a lot of what was written in the first uh, in the other two videos. Um, because it's, again, just creating a level of abstraction and putting it elsewhere in the order propagator class, so I'm going to get started. This is not actually necessary, um, it's just a good habit to have. It's called a shebang line. I'll call, I'll put a link in the description. I don't think it's actually necessary as far as um, having a Python script, but I still do like to have it. And I'm not going to explain it here because it's a bit outside the scope. So you have your usual PLT usual import. So this is the orbit propagator um, class definition where I have it in all in its own file. Integrate import ODE. And you've seen all these imports before. Um, yeah, so now we have our this is where you do your class definition propagator. And if you come from MATLAB, you'll know that if you write a function um, within a file that has to have the same name in Python, they don't. It's just convenient for me to do this just because I'm describing what it is in the file name, the orbit propagator class. So this is the what you call the init function. So whenever you um, create an instance of an orbit propagator object, um, this is the first function that's going to be called. It's what you feed in to basically when you're creating the instance. That's why it's called the init function. And then for every function that is in a class, the first argument always has to be self. Um, that's just part of itself. Um, if you've worked with JavaScript, it's the same as this. Um, I'm not sure in other languages, but I've just seen that one. Um, yeah, if you don't understand that, that's okay. Um, I'll post it in the description again to object-oriented program because it's its own kind of field. dt and then c equals pd dot earth. Um, where I'm putting that. Um, So I have this planetary data file in the same directory you can see at the top in the Python tools directory as over propagator, so I can just call it straight through, I can just say import this. And from that I'll be able to get the sun on the earth. And here I'm saying to initiate the class, 
you want to have your initial state, so your initial position velocity. You want to have t span is just how long you're going to run this in seconds. So maybe you want to run it for a day and you convert to seconds. dt is a time step that you want, and cv is central body. Where when you define a function, if you define a function as cv or as whatever it is equals something, it means it's an optional argument. So if you don't pass it in, that will be the default value. Um, you could not have it, then you'd always pass it in. But then since most of the time when you're doing sort of orbits thing like this, you're analyzing some orbit around Earth, you can just have it there. Not necessary, but it's just an example of how you can uh, select um, or do optional arguments in Python. And this, if you haven't seen object or your program before, this probably looks so weird that you can kind of just define these things like this, but um, self is just an intrinsic value of the class. Um, and you have, and then the these, so this R0 is being passed in here and you're setting it to an intrinsic value of the class. Um, that's what's going on there. And then dt self dot cv. Okay, so you're just initiating all the values, making sure that they're part of the actual class. And then after this, so once you initiate all these values, you wanna go ahead and propagate the orbit. So I'm creating another function in here, which are called methods. When you have a function inside of a class called a method, propagate orbit self, and it actually doesn't take any arguments because all it already has everything inside that it needs. And to propagate the orbit from this other script, um, in the main part of it is actually how you go ahead and propagate everything. So I'm just gonna copy and paste from here. So if you just copy and paste, propagate orbit, then tap it over once. You have end steps. I just like to put everything in the class, what's called self.n steps, and self.tspan was defined in the init function. Uh, right here, self.tspan, you define it when you pass it in when you initially make the class. This might make more sense also, this init function, when I actually plug it into the main file. Um, I guess you'll see that in a second. Initialize your variables, so I'm, I'm making everything self, self.nsets, because self just means it's an intrinsic value to the class, self.y, which I actually like to call it y, I was going to call it y, that's what I call it. So initial condition is self.y. You can see I'm kind of just putting self in front of everything because I'm having everything in the class because you never know when you're going to need it again in another function. Uh, that's something you can kind of figure out later. But might as well have everything in there, y0 equals self. And also, I like to have these because um, when I have, say, when I add in a differential equation function, um, there are some instances where there's a value that you don't want as a local variable. You want a kind of a variable within the class that you can pass in to. Actually, a good example of this to explain is this mu. When I when I plug this into the diffie q in here, I think it's all just mu now because I just went a little bit on another tangent, but this is actually pretty useful. Instead of passing in a new argument here, where you have to call it explicitly, I'm going to pass a new argument, you can just do this, where the value of mu is already inside the class, so what you can do instead of passing it in, you can just say cv mu. So you don't have to pass in a new argument, it's already part of the class, oh, and that's self .c. So the central body, whatever it is, gives the mu value inside this uh, function, which is nice. Um, and then you don't explicitly have to say self.solver, but I kind of, as I said, like to add everything to the class, make everything self. And here when we pass in an equation to the ODE um, function, it's going to be self.diffq, so that's this one right here. So I think it's self. Um, you're just passing in a method that's already inside the class, so it's just right there. You can kind of see how everything is integrated together here. For me, it just flows a lot more smoothly, and I feel like it can be a lot more organized. So while self dot solver is successful, and self dot step because step again, I'll use it in other places, not in this one, but once I keep developing this orbit propagator class, so you'll see um, step uh, is used in other places as well. Self dot integrate solver self dot solver dot t self dot dt self dot t's step self.solver.t same as everything self.step 
chopped up so we don't know why. Again, I already explained kind of how this function works, so I'm just kind of just going right through it. Um, if you kind of need a refresh, you can just go back to another video where I explained that. And then here is just going to be self.rs equals self.ys. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add the these because these are necessary in other cases um, where you're going to need these values. And then self.p is already done. Okay, so that's it for propagate orbit. You can kind of just have this function intrinsically. It doesn't need any arguments because when you call it, you already have all the intrinsic values that you need. So it's going to go straight through and it can flow very smoothly. And then here, this is also the same. All it needed was a self here as a first argument because any method in a class needs self as a first argument. And here you have the mu where you no longer have to explicitly pass it in. It's already just part of the object. And then I'm also going to add the plot. plot 3D self. Uh, let's see how I, how I want to do this. Plot, and I want to have a show plot, a save plot, what I need. Here it is, okay. Uh, plot 3D, okay. So what we have here is plot self um, and show plot equals false and save plot equals false. Um, like I said before, when you don't pass in an argument um, and you have it as this as something equals something, it, that's just a default if you don't pass in the argument. So what I'd like to do with these, and I actually forgot to show how to save a plot um, in the last video, so I'll cover that here too. Um, right here, and tab it over in this. What do you do? Oh, that's supposed to be 16 8, actually. I don't know if anyone noticed in the last video. Um, okay, so this is all the same, and this is going to be self.rs, self.rs, self.rs. I'm just filling in everywhere where you need in order to be able to implement it in whole class, which is mostly a lot of selfs. Um, and I can show you how this is kind of more portable when I can just have an example where I just... Um, I'll have one example where I have the sun, another example where I'll have the earth, and you can see how all you have to do is switch the central body and you have a whole different analysis going on. Earth radius, so where this earth radius is now going to be replaced with self.central body radius. So you can see how you can just plug in a central body and then you just go ahead and have the value that you actually want without actually having to change the class. And that's kind of the goal. You want to just be able to give it inputs and have it output what you want without actually changing any of the source code that's within what you actually want to use. That's one of the goals of doing all of this. That's just good practice in software in general. Um, all that, X lin, Y lin, and title, you can just have it. Title can be an option, optional argument where you say title, say equals um, test title where you can pass in a different thing if you want, but if you don't, then this will just be like that. I'll pass in something else just to make it a little more. And then here's one thing. Um, if show plot, then you can control outside of the function if you want to show the plot, if you want to save the plot. And then if save plot, then you can say plt save. oh, this is how you save plots. Um, so plt save figs, you're saving the current figure that is active. Um, and then one thing that I like to do is to say title plus dot PNG. And you want to use PNG because PNG is a lossless form of compression. Um, you've probably heard of JPEG before. Um, and it's a lossy compression, so it would actually lose the data once you compress it into a JPEG file. So I highly recommend using PNG. And I also recommend doing DPI equals 300, where DPI um, is a dots per inch is what it stands for. So basically 300 is the highest you can have. and it, it could fail. It could say there's too much data in here for you to use 300 and you do a lesser one. Um, I don't want to implement it here, uh, but because it'll just, I want to have more time for other things. But basically, I have a try and accept kind of clause that I like to use. But if you can just say DPI equals 300, you'll have the nicest plot. And that should be good. So that is kind of a level of abstraction that you can build with this orbit propagator class. Um, this will get more complicated as I get through more things like adding perturbations, adding different types of plots, um, adding stop conditions to the propagations. 
but this is the kind of the simplest form and I want to get this going because from this you can build up some a lot more um, and just be able to do a lot more things more quickly within your main function. So here's the main function, um, the usual imports as before. So what I want to show is if I define the central body to be, say the earth, and then let, just like before, I want to do that. Um, I have some initial condition. Actually, I'll just copy and paste it in here because I'll make it a little more fancy so it's just more entertaining. I'm just going to copy and paste in the previous videos these initial conditions. Um, where Earth radius now becomes CD radius, and you'll see why this is the case real quick. So then CD mu. R mag, R mag, V mag, and then instead of these, let's do um, just to be more creative, R mag say times zero point zero one, R mag times zero point negative, negative zero point one or something, and V mag let's just have it be um, V mag times zero point three, just to have some other values just to make it better. Let's do R mag. Let's have it be like 1500 just because to change it up to see different plots because the equatorial plots are actually pretty boring. So then, now that you have these initial conditions, um, I'll, oh, one more thing that I forgot to add or that I will add. Um, when you import things in Python, um, there's a path variable kind of within the. Let me see if I can actually. So this path, I'm going to make this bigger. So basically when you when you kind of print out this path variable, what you see is um, a bunch of paths. And what this means is that, well, at least in the Python case, what it'll do is since these directories are not in the current directory, as I said, that you can import um, kind of uh, files that are in the current directory, but these are not. So what is happening then is it's looking, it has this path variable that I'm showing here. Um, where it just has a bunch of different paths within your computer in order to be able to find things. Or, and then you're defining this is where you should look if I tell you to look for something. So um, this first one here is like a Java path. Um, there's all these paths. There's a Python 2.7 path. Um, but I'm actually running Python 3, uh, 373 in this one, in this computer. So um, this Python 2.7 won't do anything. Um, but what is actually doing it is a C users algo. So um, that is, so you can see I'm in C users. So if I ls my previous directory, well, it's not, uh, I'll just go under previous directory. Um, you can see that within the previous directory, which is C users algo, I have, this is where I downloaded the Python 3. This is why, and then the python.exe, this is where I downloaded it. So that's why you can find these functions, um, just or you can just import them and Python will find them because they're that path is included in the path. So once it looks in this folder, it'll see, oh, okay, those exist and there won't be any errors. But since I have, I'll move this back. Since I have this orbit propagator and planetary data in a different um, place, I could do the same thing where I could just put them in the path. Um, but I like to, what I like to do be more explicit and you kind of just see everything in your scripts, there is a really easy function that exists. Um, let me find it real quick. There's a really easy function that exists. Um, it's called, uh, let's see, from sys import path, where sys is a built in Python library. Um, it just does a bunch of stuff kind of more with the operating system. There's also import, o, there's also OS that does more with the operating system, but sys also works with this. And then what you have to do is path.append. Um, where you're taking this path variable and you're adding a new one just within the script. So whenever the script runs, you're adding a path variable and then you can import whatever you want that's in that path. Um, so in the case of this, and since I'm running um, Windows right now, I'm not running Linux, I had to use double backslash uh, users. It's a, actually, I can just copy and paste here just so you can see what's going on. Where I'm going to need double backslash, but you can see why it's in that because backslash means something else in a string in Python. So you just have to cancel it with a, another one. 
Um, but I don't want this. I want Python tools because I have a folder in here. And you don't have to have it separately, but um, I kind of just like to have it better because when you have it in another folder, in any folder that you have when you make a script, you can just call these just by having this. Or you could add it to your Python path here, but that's it's just a little bit different, and I feel like it's easier to do it in Python. So once that path is added, you can go ahead and say from orbit propagator import orbit propagator as op, which is what I like to do. Um, so now you've imported this orbit propagator, this class, um, within this file because you added the path and then you just import it. So what you can do is actually quite easy. You can just say op for orbit propagator equals op r0 b0 uh, t span dt. I think that's all I did in here. So t span dt cv is already earth because we already defined it, so we don't have to actually explicitly call it. And then all you have to do to actually orbit, propagate the orbit is just say propagate orbit and then plot 3D, which is what I called it already. Plot 3D and then just show plot. You can see how this builds a level of abstraction because now in three lines you've done what the work of around 100, or yeah, the work of about 100 lines you just do in three lines because you're building a level of abstraction and you just put it somewhere else so you don't have to see it. It's just there and it runs. Um, so let's see how many levels I can build. CD4 Python um, okay. invalid syntax, obviously, oh, because I have this extra dash. Invalid syntax in the planetary data file means I forgot a comma somewhere uh, right there. This is the way that you format dictionaries. You need commas after everything and not here. G is not defined. Oh, I do need to define G. Um, or do I? Oh, yeah, I do. Um, where G, G is a gravitational constant. And if you look up on the internet, it's actually really inconvenient because it usually only comes up in units of meters where you want it in kilometers. So I call this G meters. And then where G in kilometers is just the usual one is G meters times 10 to the power. And now it's defined. I put a dash in, I type it in. PD is not defined, so you use PD.earth. Oh, because once this path is added, now I can I can import orbit propagator, and in that same directory uh, is a planetary data file. That's PD, CD, PD.earth. Stars is not defined. Oh, I probably didn't put self dollar somewhere. Let me move this over. Line 80. Yep. I'm going to move this over so you can see the error message is a little better. Or if I can. Debugging is a part of any software. So there it is. And there's a little bit of a different orbit because we just changed the initial conditions. But there it is. Um, now you just have it all in a class where you can. Oh, Where you can now just in your main function only have to worry about the initial conditions. You can just plug it in and just let another file do the rest of the work. There it is. Um, it's a nice level of abstraction that's just way better to use and you can kind of get solving on the harder problems. You can kind of just forget about how you did all this, how you propagate the orbit. You just don't worry about it. It's already another file. You know how it works. You don't have to call it out every time. And then as an example, just to show, um, don't mind those other scripts. Just to show, um, I'm going to change this to the sun. And then instead of 1500, because the sun is massive, where we see that the radius of the sun is this. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Actually, I don't have to. I'll do CB radius plus, let's just do three times the radius or something. Times, or maybe even four, because why not? I'm not sure what, what Venus is or anything. And let's just make it more inclined. Let's make it times 0.5. Oh, make this one 0.8 or something. And then, yep, yeah, we change the central part of the sun. So I just see how that differentiates. Oh, that's an escape trajectory. So let's not use that example. Oh, I know why. Let's say CB equals CB. There it is, where radius, 
now we can mess with these values. Let's see how much time we get with that. Oh, 45,000, let's make this T scan like six days. So the reason it wasn't working is CV equals CV because uh, earlier I defined that if you don't pass anything in, that it's going to be Earth. So you have to make sure that you pass the sun where you're going to use the sun values. So you just plug it in and then you run it and then bam, it's a very eccentric orbit. You can't actually get this close to the sun without burning, but it's just for the sake of example how you can see that you just change the central body. And then you can see how the scale of these changes because that's now just orders of magnitude larger than it was at the Earth. So you can see that you can plug in whatever body you can add, like Jupiter, Venus, the Moon, whatever you want, and it just changes really fast. You can do it very kind of programmatically. Okay, so that is about it on that one, and then I'll go back to here. Um, yeah, show you planetary data, orbit, orbit propagator class. And for the next video, I'm going to show a plot and orbit function, so you can see in the background right here. Um, there's more than one orbit, so I'm just going to show you how to write that one. It's really, once you already have the regular uh, 3D plot down, this is really simple to do. You just have to adjust a few things. And I'm also going to talk about Keplerian orbital elements, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically there's these six values that you can have and that can describe any orbit. Um, and you can use them, they're way more kind of intuitive to figure out what an orbit looks like in your head versus just an R and V value. Because say if you just have um, R0 and V0, I'm just going to print these out, just for example. Print V0 and uh, final command exit, just get that script right there. So when you run this, um, so this kind of, even to someone who's very advanced in orbits, probably doesn't mean much of anything because it's just numbers. Um, but when you actually get into... Um, when you actually get into uh, the classical orbital elements, they mean things, or angles, something between 0 and 360 degrees, or 180 that you can actually understand. Um, so that's a lot more useful as far as visualizing um, orbits. So I, that is it for this video. Like I said, I'll be covering this in the next video. Uh, let me know, comments, if you have any concerns, questions. Again, went too fast, too slow, anything. And yep, any feedback is helpful. And thank you for watching.